Here we are with homework 2.8.1. It's three problems, 11.14, 11.78, and 11.80. Starting with 11.14, we're comparing diethyl ether and 1-butanol, which actually are isomers of each other. Each one has four carbons, 10 hydrogens, and 1 oxygen. Diethyl ether, though, has a boiling point that's low, 34.5 degrees Celsius, while butanol has a boiling point that's fairly high, 117 degrees Celsius. We're supposed to explain why. Well, diethyl ether is a very symmetrical molecule. Notice the carbons are balanced on both sides of the oxygen. As a result, there's not going to be much polarity in diethyl ether. And also, diethyl ether does not have an OH in it. It has carbon oxygen bonds, but no OH bond. And you need an OH bond or an NH bond or an FH bond in order to get hydrogen bonding. And so diethyl ether is not going to be able to hydrogen bond. Butanol, it has the oxygen on the end of the molecule, which is less symmetry. And that unbalancing is going to allow one end of the molecule to be partially negative and the other to be partially positive. Also, the OH on the end of butanol allows hydrogen bonding. So that means butanol is going to have stronger intermolecular forces, and it is the intermolecular forces that have to be broken in order to boil. And that's why butanol has a higher boiling point. Here we have the second problem, 11.78. 11.78 has uh, five steps. We are supposed to tell how much energy it's going to take to go from ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius to steam at 126 degrees Celsius. So that will be five steps because first we have to raise the temperature of the ice, then we have to melt the ice, we have to raise the temperature of the water, um, we have to vaporize the water and then raise the temperature of the steam. Some of these numbers are in the problem, but others you have to look up in the book. We have 866 grams of ice. The specific heat of ice is 2.03 joules per gram, and we're changing the temperature of the ice from negative 10 to zero. So multiplying those three numbers, MC delta T, gives us a heat required of 17,580 joules. To melt the ice, we're going to use the heat of fusion of ice times the number of moles. So up here, I calculate the number of moles of ice to be 48.1. So kilojoules per mole times moles gives me kilojoules, 289, times 1,000 gives me 289,000 joules to get the same unit as I had for the first step. Then we have our second step. We're going to warm the water from 0 to 100, so that's 866. I got the 4.184 number for water out of uh, table 6.2 back in chapter 6. And we're changing the temperature by 100 degrees Celsius, so that's 362,000 joules. The heat of vaporization is 40.79 kilojoules per mole. We still have 48.1 moles of H2O. Multiply them together, you get 1,962 kilojoules, or 1,962,000 joules. And then finally, the heat of uh, raising the temperature of the steam is going to be 866 times the specific heat of steam, 1.99 joules per gram degree Celsius, times delta T, which is 26 degrees Celsius, 44,800 joules. So I go back and I add up all the joules for all five steps, and I get 2,675,380 joules or 2,675 kilojoules, or 2.67 times 10 to the third kilojoules. Okay, our third and final problem. Uh, they give us the heat of fusion of um, iodine and the heat of sublimation and ask for the heat of vaporization. Well, we saw in that one diagram in the notes that the heat of fusion plus the heat of vaporization equals the heat of sublimation. So 15.27 plus the unknown x equals 62.3. Do your algebra, you get the heat of vaporization of iodine to be 47.03 kilojoules per mole.